Hello and welcome. I am Harish and in this channel I talk about various NoCo tools using which you can build pretty much anything from a website to an app or Google Assistant actions or even automations. This is the third episode of building with tally.so. Before we jump into this video, let's quickly recap what we have covered so far in the episode one and two. If you've missed that, please check that uh, with the links in the description below or in the iCard above. You can use this series as a starting off platform for you guys to learn what you can do with tally.so, which is an amazing tool that will help you create forms without any coding required and with almost everything free, right? So in the first episode and the second episode, we have checked different settings available and we've created a basic form in the first one. And in the second episode, what we've done is uh, looked at tracking various forms of information using hidden fields. And we have also looked at uh, converting your forms into templates uh, where you can pretty much uh, share these templates or anybody can use your template to create a form quickly without having to create each individual field. And we've also checked how to create a custom thank you page and redirect the user after they're submitting the complete form. So now in this one, let us look at uh, how we can create a multi-page form. So what are multi-page forms? Having long forms or annoying forms with many fields is a very boring uh, experience for any user, right? That's where multi-page forms kick in. Multi-page forms essentially give you a gamified experience of creating step-by-step uh, pages where you can have different fields for each page and also make it interesting for the user to fill it up right instead of uh, having a long boring form and obviously tally.so gives that feature also as a free feature where you can create any number of pages and create a multi-page form and also have conditions to redirect the user to different pages based on their submissions in any field that you are capturing right so what form are we going to build today we are going to quickly build a simple form where uh, imagine I have a SaaS product which obviously allows people to build using no code. So what I'm going to do is create a 30 day free trial sign up form and see how we can redirect the user to different pages based on their response and also have three different steps as part of this form. So let's quickly jump into building. Let me stop talking first. So let's quickly start building. I'll go to the dashboard and create a new form, right? So I'll just do create form and I have already written the labels and the fields that I want to create. So I'm just going to quickly copy paste that to the right and also explain what fields I'm using. So the first page is going to be just an introduction page. So I'm going to have a heading, so which is the form title and then I'm going to have a simple description. I'm just going to use blank template. So this is the uh, first step and then I'm going to say start my 30 day trial. And so this is page one and then we will move on to page two. So I'll just click on the page uh, button on the top that will give us page two, right? So in the page two, I'll just put a heading first. So to do that, just click on plus and have the heading. So I'm just, I'll just need the heading too. I'll just insert that, paste the text that I want. And then now I'll just insert the fields that I want. So in this page, I'm going to insert first name, last name, uh, the user's business email and the country. So these are all basic fields. So I'm just going to do short answer and this is going to be first name. And if you want the label to appear on the top, instead of just a placeholder, you can also do that by adding the label. I'll just show you that on another field. So this is our first name. Then we need our last name. Alternatively, you can also skip this to the end if you don't want uh, boring form creation. So the other one we need is an email field. So you can also do that by clicking email. I'll say business email. And the last field that we need is a country field, which is a short answer again. So I'm just going to do this. Now the first page is done. If you've noticed all the fields are uh, mandatory. So if the user has to move to the next page, he has to fill these uh, fields. Now I'll also change this to next instead of submit. So that the user knows that there is a next page. Now I'm going to click page again and insert the other fields for this one. 
I have a he quick heading again on this one just to make it interesting guys. Why do we add headings just to make it more user friendly and make it interesting for the user also. Otherwise they would skip it and not fill the form at all, right? And in this one, we'll add all uh, optional fields, right? The first one being company name. And I also want to understand the user's company size where I want to only provide the software for companies that have larger size. So we'll add a condition also and see how we can redirect the user to different pages based on their response. So I'm going to use a drop down field, but before that, let's add a label. As I mentioned, if you want the label to appear on top of the field instead of just a placeholder, placeholder is the text that appears inside the field. So I'm just going to do label here and insert the label is going to be company size. This is just an example guys. You can add label for all the fields to make it look consistent. And now we need a drop box. Dropbox is multiple drop down fields. Sorry, yeah, drop down. <laughs> so the first option is 1 to 10. The second option is 11 to 50. And the third option is 50 to 200. And the fourth option is 200 plus. This is the different size of companies uh, that I want to track essentially in my form. So the next field that we have here is phone number. And again, optional field. I don't want to force users to enter their phone number. So if you click on the dots here, you can also have multiple options for each field. You can hide this field. You can also make it required, which is in this case, we want to make it optional. And you can also have a default answer. For example, if you have some fields where you have a default answer, you can enable this and add the default answer. Now we have just made it optional. And in this, we'll enter phone number as a, again, as a placeholder, right? Now we are done with this. Now, I think, for the sake of this example, I'll just uh, make it very simple two step form. So I'm, I will just add a quick label again or text text should work for us, which is the condition by proceeding you you are agreeing to our terms of service and privacy policy very important to do this guys make sure you have the consent of the user when you're collecting especially critical information about the user. So whenever you are creating forms, make sure you have this condition and also instead of just underlining have them for real for the sake of example i'm just underlining them but make sure you add them add the actual privacy policy in terms of service and the last one is obviously submit instead of submit let me just uh, change it to start my trial now we are done setting up the pages for the form right we have different fields two pages different fields and now the logic that i want here is if the company size is these two options i don't want the user to uh, start the get the free trial right so what i'm going to do is after this what i'm going to do is quickly click on plus and add a condition if you scroll down all the way bottom there is a conditional logic if you click on this you can add logic and have what conditions you want to measure so here company name is let's say oh sorry i said it the wrong field so here, if company size is one to 10, I will also add, click on this and add another condition because I want to see these two or make sure it is or because the user can select this or this, right? So now the company size again is 11 to 50, then jump to page. If you can see here, there are multiple options, right? You can force the user to answer. Then you can show different blocks, right? Blocks are basically these. Each field is a block. Even text is a block here because you are writing everything uh, as if you are writing in a uh, notepad, right? So in this case, we want to jump to a different page, right? We'll select the page just in a bit. For that, we will need to add the page, obviously. So now here, I'm going to add the default thank you page first. You can do this at the end also. You, there is no specific order here, but I've just added the thank you page and I'm then going to add a quick heading here in the thank you page. This is the default page, guys. Don't get confused. This is the default page that is shown once the user finishes the form completely. And then I just have a quick text here. I, I just want to show just a note for the user for entering the details. And that's it. We'll also end it with another text field. That's it. We have this as the default page, right? Now I'm going to add another page, which is not the default thank you page. This page will only appear if the logic here satisfies. So now you can go back and select page five here because if this or this conditions 
are good to go then the user is directed to this page but if for if these conditions are not met the user is sent directly to page 4 that's all guys that's simple it's not complex so don't worry now in this page i have to show a message that we are sorry that we are not open to companies that are of a certain size right so i'm just going to add text again uh, or yeah let's make it a heading if possible yeah i mean it, it is possible let's let's insert a heading too and delete this directly very quick and easy and then add a message so the user knows why we are doing what we are doing right so enabling thank you page removes the button right so now we have thank you pages that's it so now we are done creating the page we have different sections now let's just click publish and see how this form works right now the form is published i'm just going to as usual copy the url here you can also add hidden fields and leverage all the other functionality that we discussed in the previous episodes but let's see what what happens when you submit right let me just quickly fill the form right the first one is done i went uh, this is let's say amazing company now if you see the label appears on top of the field right so this is my i'm just testing out the first condition start my trial it should ideally go to we are sorry perfect this works so you can send the user to a different page if the condition is met but now let's go back and try opening the form again and now let us fill the form like a like a good person and see is the default thank you page opens up right so i'm just going to fill this up quickly show this do next company name is amazing company again but now this time our size is a big company we are a big company guys so let's just to start my trial and that's it now this gets stored in fact actually both of the details get stored so you can see who are the ones who haven't satisfied and you can actually email them once you are ready to accept smaller size companies in this example right so now i'm going to go to responses and you can see that both the values got stored and here there is you can see the company size right now you know which thank you page also uh, appears based on the conditions uh, we have added right that's how simple it is to create a page multi page form using tally.so drop a like if that was useful consider subscribing if you're interested in no code and if you know somebody who's trying to find developers and uh, wants to convert an idea into reality send them here because our channel is all about no code see you in the next episode of building with uh, tally.so and peace